application of the guidance as well. Look, Frank has talked in, in the commentary I've seen so far uh, about the challenges ahead. Uh, and I don't know where you're going to start, but I want to know what the key challenges in your mind are. Good morning to you. Yeah, good morning and uh, thank you very much uh, for having uh, me here. Well, so I think, first of all, um, over the last two years, we have reached a new level as a company in terms of uh, profitability when you look at our EBIT, at our cash. And I'm really glad that in this first quarter, we were able to confirm that we are keeping uh, to this new level despite all the turbulences around us. Uh, so, yes, there's obviously the terrible war in the Ukraine. Uh, we see the impact from the lockdowns in China on global supply chains. There is a lot of uncertainty, but what gives us confidence and what was the basis for us confirming our guidance is that we have this very broad and balanced and resilient portfolio. And I think that really paid off uh, in the first quarter uh, again. Um, I was looking at the cash flow, which as a uh, chief financial officer, you'll be mostly excited about, I'm sure. The fact your free cash flow adjusted for acquisitions was 1.1 billion euros uh, on the prior record year. So again, you're the one who holds the po po purse strings. Uh, you must be excited about that. But are you going to use some of that to get your shares back up again? Because I noticed that they've come off quite aggressively from the most recent highs, but that doesn't mean anything in itself. Then I looked at the valuation of those shares and they trade at a, a discounted level, I think, to some of the broader indices. So is there an argument here uh, for extended share purchases? Yeah, I mean, obviously, when you look at our share price development, uh, that had not been in line with uh, the financial performance uh, we have shown. Uh, when you analyze the root causes, I think it has less to do with us as a company. Uh, it is more linked uh, to general trends in the market. Uh, so obviously, European stocks have been out of favor. Uh, transportation has been going through a normalization. Um, so I think for us, the focus is on doing the right stuff and delivering great numbers. And as you rightly say, um, cash uh, plays a particularly important role here. That was one of our weak spots in the past. Uh, we have put a lot of focus on improving our cash generation, our cash conversion. We were very pleased with more than 4 billion in uh, free cash flow in 2021. And indeed, it was a very strong start into the year. And in terms of uses of cash, uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, we will use parts of the cash we are generating uh, for share buybacks. Uh, we announced a 2 billion euro share buyback, which we just started executing uh, now in April. Melanie, it's Karen jumping in. I want to ask you about inflation because central banks are fixated on it and, of course, markets as well. And you can see in the numbers today that you've got a challenge around the materials expense that was up strongly, what, 2.9 billion increase on the uh, same time a year ago, but staff costs also up uh, 482 million uh, euros. Just give us a sense as to whether any of these increases are starting to fade out or are you still expecting to see very high levels of inflation imports around these various factors in the business? Yeah, great question. And uh, we have been talking uh, about rising inflation for quite some time now. Uh, when we talked about our Q3 numbers in November, we already included a slide in our presentation on how we're dealing with inflation. And that is also the way we think about it at the moment. It is something we will probably have to live with uh, for the next uh, months and uh, quarters uh, to come. Uh, and I think what is always important for us is that we actively manage inflation. There are different instruments um, uh, which we are making use of. I think one very important element uh, for us is the fuel surcharge. Um, across the DHL divisions, uh, we have regular fuel surcharge mechanisms in place, which allow us to pass on increases in fuel prices with a certain time lag uh, to customers. Uh, so there are well-established mechanisms in place, but it is super important that the whole organization stays focused uh, on making sure that we actively manage uh, the rising inflation levels, because listening to all the the macro news uh, that is uh, certainly going to stay with us for some time. Melanie, there's a lot of interesting numbers in this report today. And the other big one really around air and ocean freight uh, numbers, uh, where you had growth of 3% in air freight volumes. But if you look at the revenue number, that's extraordinary, up 55.2%. The ocean freight volumes up just 0.3 of a percent, but then revenues more than doubling. It tells us a story about those freight rates and just what the industry has been witnessing here. Do you think we're getting into the point of demand destruction because of those freight rates? 
Yeah, we are obviously still in an extremely distorted market environment, and uh, you can see that very clearly in the numbers uh, you just quoted. Both air freight rates and ocean freight rates um, are um, on certain lanes uh, at abnormally high levels. Uh, that has clearly supported uh, our global forwarding freight numbers in the first quarter. Uh, we had a record EBIT uh, of 600 million euros. It is also due to our internal efficiency improvements, but the market is clearly still distorted. I think the biggest challenge uh, for global supply chains at the moment are the lockdowns in China, um, much less uh, than the implications of the terrible war in the Ukraine. Uh, so a lot will now really depend on how and when um, uh, the situation in China we are seeing some first signs um, of improvements. Um, so, for example, being able to truck from the airport to the service centers in Express, that has improved uh, over the last uh, week. We have now started inbound uh, services in Express to eastern China uh, again. Uh, but there is clearly still a significant backlog. The expectation